Yeah. Three days of track action, two days of racing, seven classes of carts for the season ending Autumn Cup. Once again, top quality levels of competition, and uh, really, I think it's kind of like topping off the story of the last few years here. We've been here to talk about this before, but things have changed considerably on the up since then. So I think it's time to dive back in. This is a challenging track to prep for and it's becoming increasingly important in motorsport in the northeast because, as I've said before, we don't really have a massive motorsport culture up here. And there's a, a fairly vibrant scene from teams as well as drivers, as well as the facilities that we've got here now. And if we look over there, we can see what's this. It's a hole in the ground. But yeah, it's not a mess, it's just an indication of how things are coming along. Over the last couple of years, the, the track's been fairly redeveloped and renovated. New light and added in, a good makeover just to start. Electronic scoring and light boards, as you can probably see here. Uh, and that big hole in the ground is going to become garages with a viewing platform on top. Now I'm going to say, and it's not blowing smoke out of anybody's backside, but I think if you took the dedicated team from this venue and plonked them into half of the big senior race tracks in this country, then some of them might not be as breadline as what they appear to be. It would certainly raise some of the standards. I've said it before, but after another season trackside in the UK, I've looked at facilities even more closely with different eye and what I said at the beginning of the year I think it stands even truer than ever even at a time when some venues are really feeling the pinch they're not looking into the little details like what you see here and it's making a hell of a difference of drivers on the way to the grid for a stand and start and you don't know where their future is going to take them and hopefully in the future this place is going to be very important for everybody who races here because the history of the drivers who race at venues is really important you only have to look down the road at our local big track Croft and people look at it in the area and say yeah do you remember when Lewis Hamilton raced there in Formula Renault do you remember when Sergio Perez had probably the biggest crash in the history of the place in Formula 3? But it's not just that, they even go back and talk about Croft in terms of Jim Clark and hunting louder. Now, I don't know if we're going to produce any Formula 1 world champions today, but at some point in time, now that this track's becoming part of the infrastructure of British Carton, names that you're going to be watching on television in the future are going to have part of their career developed here. When you consider that, when you go into a driver's office and you see photographs on the wall of the history, there's always photographs of Carton. 
And I think it would be hard to disagree that when you look around here, that in the future there's going to be drivers who are going to be making it Indy car, Formula One, Le Mans, whatever. They're going to be sticking photos up on the wall. It's going to be of the carton tiers. And well, if they want a nice background, it's going to be board and law, isn't it? See the importance of this track is growing. As you can see, we're here. We are, far. We are here for a club meeting, and of course, high car racing takes a. But you know, the likes of the UK, see the British Car Championships now seeing it as a, a regular and valuable part of the infrastructure. Uh, on the periphery of things, I think the growth can be measured by even if you wander around the paddock, we've seen Formula One race winners. Uh, British touring car race winners, names that you'll know from endurance sports car race and names that you'll know from the FIA single seater junior system. It does help raise the profile and it certainly adds a little bit of flavour and spice to the story. But the thing is, the spice of the story is what's going on track really. It's a fantastic track. Here's my favourite place, the gas works. Yeah, pin. And where the cars are coming out right now, Dog leg is fast becoming considered to be one of the most challenging series of corners in British kart racing. As for local racing culture, I think the first person you have to stop and look at is Sir Frank Williams from just that way up in South Shields. Sir Leslie Moore, the second baronet of Sunderland, who did win a Formula One non-championship race. Uh, Alpes is, has a record for being the slowest driver in Formula One, the only driver in Formula One to have been black flagged for being too slow. George Robson, who won the 1946 Indianapolis 500 from Gosforth and Newcastle, our import, so to speak, would be Jason Plato, who grew up in North Tyneside. Of course, most of you will know him as the pantomime villain, if you're a Matt Mayle fan. Of course, there are other races from the region who've done well for themselves, but whether it's all the way back in time to Robson or up to modern day drivers who could make it in single seater racing or sports car racing, They've never had a facility like this. There has been facilities, but none like this. It's, it's, it is really is becoming crucial. Now I think that in the future we'll be seeing races names from the region stepping further more often than we have before. I also think that in the future, with this track now becoming part of national cart, that you'll see drivers who go on to great things who'll be able to see, yeah, I remember them racing at Warden Law. <laughs> 